when you sleep with two dogs in the same bed, when and how do you play hide the sausage? <laughs> That's an actual question. <laughs> well, first off. <laughs> Thanks to AG1 for sponsoring a portion of today's video. Hey everyone, welcome back. Hope you had a great week. So this week's video is a little bit different. We're really in relax mode. We actually don't have any projects on right now. We're just enjoying having electricity and water and it's really been life changing. Yeah, we haven't done anything. We haven't picked up any new projects this week and it's the first time we've not done that in a while and actually just like relaxing, being in the sauna and the hot tub and just finally enjoying our space. It's, it feels pretty great. So. Yeah. Rather than doing another project this week, we thought we'd sit on the couch and hang out with you all, answer some questions that you sent in. Um, literally thousands, by the way. Yeah, we were not prepared for no. all the questions. <laughs> um, thank you so much for, I guess, like even just caring about us that much to want to know more. Yeah, um, we'll answer yeah. as many questions as we can. Um, yeah, should we just... Let's get into it. Let's get into it. First question, when you sit down and look at all you've accomplished thus far, what brings you the most joy? You can't say running water or each other. That's a really good question. That is a good question. Okay, so for me, I would say the gardens, um, mm. because I've always loved gardening and plants and stuff, and I've never really had a space like this to explore that. So I really like in the spring and like into July when you can see the plants really starting to grow and like they're so much bigger from the year before and you can see it's just happy and healthy and it makes me feel happy and healthy. Hmm, I like that. I'd say probably the dome. Like this is such a beautiful space and to be able to wake up in here every day and go to bed in here every day, like the view is just, it's truly unbelievable and it's never gotten old and I thought that it would like you know normally when you go to like a beautiful space you get used to it I haven't gotten used to this yet so yeah I think it's also because it's always changing like mm -hmm. we don't have artwork in here we just have a great big window and nature is our art and we get to see it change with the season so wow very yeah. poetic I know. of you <laughs> it's almost like I'm a philosopher yeah. where's me stone <laughs> Hi, I came to your channel late in the game and I would like to know a little bit more about your background. When did you guys meet? What was your relationship like in the beginning? And what made you want to decide to live off grid? And where were you living just before you made this decision? If you explained this before, I'm sorry, I'd love a recap. No need to apologize, no. grab a chair. <laughs> <laughs> so the quick Cole's Notes version, because we've definitely answered this in a Q&A before, is Todd and I met right before we were both going away to university, so we lived in separate places. I was 17, he was 18, and we randomly got paired up as pen pals from the university that we were going to be attending, so it was kind of like happenstance, I guess. Like, it was just luck. And then we wrote to each other, text message, sort of got to know each other over the eight months before we actually met in person. We met in person, we started dating. That was 14 years ago. Yeah. And then, yeah, the rest is like history. We got, eventually got engaged, we got married. Started a couple businesses together, moved yeah. across the country, bought an RV, traveled around North America, COVID hit. We came back to Canada, intended to put a driveway with a nice little garden to ride out COVID and keep traveling. And three years later, we just got running water here. <laughs> What were some of the things that you envisioned when starting that turned out to be completely different than expected? Anything that you thought would be important that weren't and vice versa? I think the biggest thing for me when we started was sort of how naive I was on the space that it takes to properly generate solar. Oh yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, and especially because like we view ourselves as off-grid differently and like mm -hmm. we're off-grid because we're choosing to lock our utility prices in today by building our own infrastructure opposed to where we live we have a very old infrastructure for our power grid as well as our water if we lived in a city um there's a lot of deferred maintenance like yeah. billions and billions of dollars and there's a lot of studies and research that suggests that over the next 30 years, that's gonna have to be upgraded, which is gonna really drive up the price of utilities. So the decision for us to do this has been sort of driven in part by that. So I didn't understand how much space it was gonna take for the solar. 
Um, so that really opened up the house area for us. I thought we'd be able to live like more in a just like cabin in the woods with a small little panel, but. Yeah, that was the initial dream and sort of hope, but we've been able to accomplish that in the dome. Like the dome is completely surrounded by trees and it's just like this little nook. We still are connected to all of the infrastructure we've built, um, but yeah. Yeah. Why does Todd like driving so much? Because Tyler, why did I almost Tyler. say- Tyler! I almost said my own name. Because Tyler is awful at directions and if I'm not driving, I have to just constantly be telling him where to go. So I might as yeah. well drive myself. It's pretty bad. <laughs> he actually called me once because he was lost in a parkade and couldn't figure out how to get out of it. As if I know where you are in the parkade to direct you, but anyway, that's a story he'll never live down. Are there any future goals you two have beyond the confines of the land? Well, that's a good question. That is a good question. I personally would like to get back more into like creative things, like having more time to play guitar, piano, more musical things. It's something that I used to do a lot more when I was younger and I just kind of like lost it, which is a shame. So uh, yeah. That. Yeah. I kind of want to get back into like either I don't know. I really like building. I guess I don't get back into it. It's just continuing on. Um, but like, you're pretty crafty. Yeah, and I really enjoy the process of renovating this whole. This is our first time building from scratch, and it's a whole different kind of worms than like renovating a house. So I kind of have a dream of buying like an old, rundown house on the cliff by the ocean somewhere, and just like restoring it to its 1800 glories. And then wow, that would be really cool. Yeah, and then we're just gonna have a big hay field out there that we can run through. But then you can always see the driveway so that when the guests for the B&B &B show up, we see them coming. To I'm gonna them. get a big cozy cable knit wool sweater and I'm gonna sip coffee yeah. on the edge of the cliff looking out. And I'm gonna wear linen dresses with rubber boots. Oh, <laughs> look out, future goals. <laughs> <laughs> My question is, who broke the bed? Love you guys, you're both so cheeky. It was a joint effort. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And that's that. <gasps> oh my. <laughs> Will you feature more friends and family slash social moments on your channel? Oh, that's a cute question. That is. So, of course, like when we can, whenever family's over and if we happen to be filming, we'll include them. However, we have to be mindful, not everyone is comfortable being on camera. We choose to have a YouTube channel and we never want someone to come here and not feel welcome and like yeah you know or awkward or anything like that yeah and it is intimidating yeah. having people comment on your appearance and this is a very vulnerable experience so like yeah not yeah. everyone's comfortable with that and it also hasn't been the most comfortable here so last winter it was freezing i remember we had my cousin michelle over for drinks and we had to wear like our snow suits inside at the table it because was so it was cold so cold so like it hasn't been that comfortable, which now that we have water and we're properly insulated and the lights just don't turn out because the generator didn't charge the battery full, it's like a whole different experience having people here, you know? Yeah. Like, imagine having to go over for a glass of wine and you're in a park. <laughs> Not fun. That was here. <laughs> I recently discovered your channel, Yay YouTube Algorithm, and I'm hooked. I've spent some delightful hours going back and seeing how you got to where you are now, and I'm so impressed. Thank you, Jane. You guys are amazing. My question is for Tyler. I adore your photography, and I was wondering how many cameras you use on days when you vlog. Do you pre-plan your shots or set things up and wait for the magic? Keep up this incredible work. You have so many fans who can't wait till Sunday for a new video. Wow, thank you so much for that. Um, so, we don't script our videos at all. Like it's just, it's an approach that we've taken that we really like the raw, real moments. So typically we have three different cameras set up. So there's one right there, one right there, and then <laughs> one right there. And we just leave them set up. And when they're on long enough, we forget that they're even rolling. So or even when we are aware, it. We've like long ago learned that the camera is our friend. Yeah. And that's, you're just in the room hanging out with us while we're doing the projects. That's how we kind of view it. Yeah, so we just film what's happening and... Yeah, grab some detailed shots yeah. along the way, set an iPhone up to take a time lapse, and then you throw the drone up, get some aerial shots, and boom, nice song on it, you got a video. <laughs> 
question. I was wondering, once everything was completed, what do you all expect your monthly expenses to be? Other question is, do you all ever see yourselves keeping farm animals like goats and chickens? Ooh, I like, I like both those questions. So, um, far, the farm animals thing first. Yes, we've been talking about it a lot more lately, and it's definitely something that we are going to do, except we want to be smart and actually get the container house fully finished, be comfortable, and then like when we start on the greenhouse and everything that we have planned, we'll tackle that then. Yeah, that's a good way of looking at it. Like, yeah. we only have so many hours in the day, folks. <laughs> and, and when I tell you we're stretched thin, you don't even know. <laughs> Oh, what do we expect our monthly expenses to be? Mm. So we expect it to be, we pay, I think, $100 a month for internet. I think we pay $100 each for our cell phone. So about $300 yeah. there. And then property taxes, because believe it or not, we have to pay property taxes. That'll be around 200 ish a month, but we won't have any other bills besides that. And so we're maybe around 500, which but I think is pretty reasonable. Also, we'll also have, um, like we are putting into insurance or like yeah, something, the so. The maintenance of the property. So maybe like $250 a month more for that. Hey guys, okay, you said tough <laughs> questions <laughs> aloud. So are you aware that your vlogs show a glimpse of what a relationship between two men can look like? and how much this may help straight people understand the LGBTQ community. I mean, I am learning so much from you, and actually what I ended up finding exceptional is your loving relationship. People sometimes just discriminate because they are ignorant, and watching you guys is such an inspiration in so many ways. Love from your Aww. way. Wow. wow. That's, um, that's, that's re really nice. I feel like, wow. Yeah. That is really nice. It's very interesting because, um, like, that's part of the reason we're on YouTube. Not so much about, like, the healthy relationships and stuff, because, honestly, sometimes we think ours is, like, dysfunctional, <laughs> not healthy, but everyone classifies it differently, I guess. <laughs> um, but we just found that what we like wasn't represented. So, sure, we're part of the LGBTQ plus community, but wanting to live differently and alternatively wasn't really there so I feel like yeah. that's why we kind of just kept exploring and posting and yeah. yeah I never I don't really think of it that what we're doing is making an impact in that way but I guess in some ways you're right because like there is even still to this day there's not enough representation and the fact that we could be a little small part of that to be really honest part of me wants to like say no and you know but I want to like take that compliment and say like thank you. I really appreciate that. Even though it's not our intention, it's cool if we can make some what of a difference. Yeah. Like I always I thought we would make more of a difference in like helping people find their sexuality and stuff, not someone that's straight understanding the community because I never really thought Yeah, I never that, really thought of it in that way. Yeah. It's cool. Thank yeah. you for like thank making you us for think. That. Yeah. Question, do you honestly drink Athletic Greens every day? I get that it's a paid sponsorship and that's beneficial to you money-wise. However, when you see every other van lifer, travel vlogger, and so on, all getting the same sponsorship, it's not believable. Athletic Greens has oversaturated the YouTube market. That is a very, very good question and a legitimate question. 100%. We actually love AG1, they are such an amazing product. They have just really helped us, especially because like, <laughs> they're right here. Yeah, so we um, have been using it for almost three years yeah. now. We've been working with them for almost two because we really love it and want to share it with all of you. Yeah, and for us personally, like we bought AG1 ourselves and we're using it for a year before we ever worked with them in a sponsorship capacity. So. Again, everyone runs their channels differently, like we can't really speak for other people, but we only ever feature products on our channel that we actually legitimately use and love. And yeah, we just really believe in the product. It's helped our energy. It's just done so much for our overall well-being mm -hmm. that we love the product and can't say enough about it. Yeah, exactly. Plus, it just tastes great, which is so much different than a lot of the other products. Yeah. All right, next question. With your newfound freedom, water, and electricity, what are you most excited to focus on this spring? 
for me it's gardens. I think it's always gonna be gardens in the spring. I miss my babies right now, so I just can't wait to get back out there, get my hands dirty, and get to work. Mine is definitely the shipping containers. Like, I just cannot wait for that project, which is just unbelievable that it's happening again. Um, but yeah, I'm really excited to be able to like continue building our home. Yeah, it's gonna be pretty good. That's a good one too to look forward to, I guess. But yeah. What is the most challenging part of living alone in the woods? 100% the electric and water component of it was the most difficult, no question. Yeah. Having to go get water jugs every day if we needed water, gas for a generator. Like we were constantly like lifting things and mm -hmm. filling things and it was just, it was a constant time suck. And I've noticed in the last week, we have so much more free time to actually like live and enjoy life. So now that we have that, life has been very good the last week, but I think it's been so rough for three years that we're just on such a high. What did you both study in university? We both did business. Yeah. Always wondered, is the cost of every off-grid installation better than the monthly bills long term? It's a good question. Yeah. So for our system, when we first started out exploring this, we did the math and our system has a seven to 10 year cost recovery period, depending on production, consumption, all that type of stuff. But that's also using dollars from 2021. Yeah. And for instance, where we live, last month, the price of electricity went up 6.9%. So that has already made our cost recovery time that much quicker. So I would imagine the cost recovery is gonna shorten as the billions and billions of dollars of infrastructure and all of the things that are happening that are causing bills to go up, our cost is fixed forever. Also, we have a dirty grid where we live, so it's mostly coal production for our electricity. So even if I had to pay a little bit more, I feel better not being part of that system. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did you ever consider a Spotify playlist? Such nice songs in your vlog. We actually include them on our website every week. Yeah. Todd goes in. It's under the playlist section at the top and you can, yeah, yeah, go check it out. If money slash time were not a factor, what things would you have done differently on the land? I would have hired the entire project out and sat in a beach chair watching it. If money wasn't an option. No, that, you wouldn't have. Yeah. You love it too much. That's true. I just, I, I like the have. idea. <laughs> if you could call your past self and leave a voicemail, when and what would you say? Okay, so that's a good question. That's a good question. I would call myself when we were leaving our jobs and first starting out on the road trip. I know it's very recent and probably seems like a weird time, but for me, I feel like I missed out on a lot of that first part of the trip because I was really stressed that we, we had a very comfortable life in our old life and we threw it all away for nothing. Felt like at the time. That's what I, yeah. I thought I was like, I thought we made the wrong decision and we never talked about it, but for like the first, I would say maybe month and a half, every time we were towing the trailer, I would have like a full panic attack. That's why Tyler actually did the driving in the first part of the road trip, because I just couldn't function. And I would call myself and say, you did the right thing because it was really, like I feel like I missed a lot of that. You know? Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah, I know, I know what you mean. Yeah. I think I would probably call myself when we found out that the shipping container home wasn't gonna work, I would call myself and say, like, it is gonna be like bumpy, but you'll, like, it's gonna be okay. Oh, that's a good one too. Mm -hmm. I wish we had got that call. <laughs> oh yeah. No, no one called, no one said nothing. Yeah. I'm so happy for you. Electricity and water, yay. My question is, when not filming for the vlog, how often do you argue about something that you did while filming when you both had different ideas? And I 100% know you don't go to bed angry because the two of you are both amazing. <laughs> Sending hugs to my dynamic du duo, my boys, and their little family. Sending you lots of hugs back, Lynette. Okay, so we, when we bicker and like, disagree we really like get it out of our system and then we just like move on we both don't like dwell and like we're both very blunt people and like very direct and like quite honestly don't have time to waste on it yeah. so that's why like i'm sure if we like are bickering sometimes it might seem like we're fighting to other couples but we're literally just skipping all the sugar coating getting to the fact of what we need to figure out we're disagreeing on figuring out how to agree on it and moving on 
Yeah, and... It's not an HR-approved way of dealing with um, in workplace conflict, but you know what? It's how we do it. <laughs> yeah, and for most of our relationship, we have been working together in various business ventures and things that we've wanted to, like, try out. Yeah, so we've so, just yeah. had a lot of experience. Plus, I also credit the fact that Tyler and I are very both like-minded and we're fortunate enough that we got together at a point that was sort of our foundational years yeah. as well. So we went through a lot of the same lived experiences at the exact same age, real time with each other. So I feel like that adds a whole nother aspect to our relationship. The reality is we are so incredibly lucky. This most days. <laughs> no, it's, I just want to say it's not lost on me. Like the connection that we have and this life that we've built, not many people that start dating at 17 and 18 are able to like stay together and grow together. And it is really beautiful. So I just want to say, yeah, it's I'm... not lost. Not to be like a total sap, but like it is pretty special. Yeah. Like, I dread the day that you're gone and I just got to walk this property by myself, you know? Oh, that would be so sad. It'd be so sad. We're going to go notebook style. Same night. Same night. If I, if I end up dead, Dad probably did it. We're filming a video. We're trying, we're trying to film something. We're actually in the middle of filming a video. I don't know if you knew that, but... Yeah, but I booked the couch for this time, so I'm just going to... Oh. Excuse me. Uh, you don't mind if I just... Sorry I have to ask this, I've been watching you for a few years now, but I've always wondered, when you sleep with two dogs in the same bed, when and how do you play hide the sausage? <laughs> <laughs> That's an actual question. <gasps> well, first off, <laughs> I love your outtake on life, and um, second <laughs> is when we were in the RV, we had a bedroom door, just like when we lived in a house, and here we have an outhouse. Yeah, they and in go, the summer, they get fresh air. We call it a little field trip. So <laughs> they go to the outhouse and... It's yeah. actually kind of sad though, because I feel like they all kind of know and they oh, do yeah. like a walk of shame, like for us. Todd and their voices always when they come back and he says, we know. We know what you did in our bed. <laughs> Oops, squirrels in the sink. Are you going to put all the shipping container build wisdom into a book? Well, when we start being wise about it, maybe we'll write an idea or two down. <laughs> but I tell you what, no one wants to buy our book. No. <laughs> what Not to Do by Tyler and Tyler. Yeah. <laughs> Will you eventually share some sort of cost breakdown for all the work you've done on the land? Absolutely. 100%. We We're just... not intentionally like hiding or not saying it, by yeah. the way. We just, every project we don't want to be like, and this was, three thousand dollars with like no context as to like the broader yeah sure also a lot of our projects are still ongoing so we don't know the true cost of them until yeah. they're completely done and we want to paint like a realistic true picture and not just piecemeal and set people off on like a false journey we're kind of excited actually like when the project is fully finished we want to do i don't know if anyone would be interested in this let us know in the comments but like a recap video on like our electrical system like the exact breakdown to the penny and like explain how much it generates per month and like i feel like that's kind of boring on or, i don't know let us know if you find that interesting because i love that stuff I'm just loving the fact that I was told to be more concise and you're just over here being Gabby Gabby. I know, sorry. I love it though. <laughs> Any progress on the house? Yes. yes. There's been huge, huge progress. So next week we are starting back on the container build, which is another reason why we just wanted to take it easy this week and rest before we take on like the biggest project of our life. Yeah. We feel like it's a sign that we got water and electric just before this happened. Like imagine if we were yeah. trying to build the house and we still didn't have the water and electric running. Can you imagine? Like I would have even more gray hair than I do now. <laughs> Same. <laughs> Be more than a touch. Will you have a working toilet in the container home so you don't have to go outside? Absolutely. It's a full fledged, like legit normal home. Three bedrooms, two bathrooms, 1600 square feet. Yeah. All the bells and whistles that a normal house would have. Yeah, that's something that we get asked a lot about like off grid, like is it gonna be a typical house? What's gonna be in it? Our reason for going off grid 
is different than other people's, which is different than the next person that went off. Yeah. But that's what's cool about this community is it people are doing it for different reasons. We did it for the environmental reasons, for the fa the power production where we live, but also the ability to control our utility costs throughout our life. So now that we have built them, we have, and once we realize the cost, like we have them for the rest of our lives. So inside the house is actually going to be a normal, typical house dishwasher. We're gonna have an oven, a full size yeah. fridge. Like it's gonna be pretty cool. When do you think you will move into the container house? We aren't in a rush whatsoever because we were very intentional to set the dome up exactly the way we want it. We absolutely love living here and it's very comfortable. With that said, we would ideally like to be living in it in like a year. However, <laughs> knowing us, it's probably pretty unrealistic. Yeah, we got a comfortable space. We don't need to rush it and make mistakes, you know? Make more mistakes. Yeah. <laughs> Love the videos TNT. Can I ask if you had to get planning permission to put the shipping container home in place? I live in Ireland and planning permission for rural sites can be very hard to obtain unless there was a previous dwelling. Thanks. Yeah, that was a big reason it took so long. The engineering and the permitting for such a unique build and structure it was a lot of work. Yeah, that is something that we get asked a lot too though is about permits and stuff. Yeah. This build is a fully permitted build with full inspections throughout the construction process. Yeah. There will be an occupancy permit at the end. It's just simply built out of metal and not connected to a grid. Will you be doing any more road trips? Loved all your previous vlogs while on the road. Um, I would say yes, definitely not to the same extent that yeah. we did. Um, but travel will still be involved in our life in some form. I just don't know that like the endless road trip and that sort of experience is what we want going forward. Like this place that we're building is just something that we really want to spend as much time as possible at. And then maybe we'll buy a van and like renovate that, that we can go away for like four weeks at a time. But like this feels like home and I, I can't imagine like leaving for like, let's be honest. If we're going to do anything, we're going to become snowbirds. Yeah. <laughs> I could definitely go without the winter. Like if oh, I yeah. never saw another snowflake in my life, I would be totally cool with that. But like we live in Canada, all our family lives in Canada. It's just the reality. Yeah, exactly. So love your channel so much. I'd like to know if you have any tips or stories about dealing with and choosing the right contractor for a job. You do so much on your own. I'd love to hear your perspective on when do you hire someone and maybe when you have regretted or been glad of doing it. That's a really good question. I think that the easiest way to decide when we hire in an expert is if the task could potentially kill us because it's like a biggie. say high voltage electricity something like that um or running the crane they wouldn't let me run the crane yeah. we had to bring in experts to do that i don't Weird get it i don't get why they would must i even like i said look i'll tie a rock onto this rope and move it <laughs> so if if it's gonna kill us and if it requires like an inspection that would be really difficult to pass without having it mm -hmm. that like plumbing for example like we needed to have a plumber here to do it and like sign off on everything just because of the permitting process where we live and that's okay because we're able to do all of the other work to get to that point which is like 80 percent of the cost so yeah labor is the most expensive part of any build so by where far we, and where we can and feel comfortable we're going to cut the labor cost by doing it. Especially lately, like if you've been thinking about maybe doing a big renovation or you wanna build and you don't have to do it right now, I don't know if labor prices are ever gonna go down, but it is just, it's astronomical how expensive it is right now. Yeah. Well, thank you for joining us. This was awesome that we didn't have to break our backs working <laughs> on a big project this week. And we just I, got to hang out. You did more work than us by typing all those questions up. So yeah. huge shout out to all of you for sending those in. And if there's anything that you wanted to know that we didn't answer, we're always chatting with you all in the comments. So just write them below and we'll answer you. Or maybe we just take more weeks off. Like one week is a project, one week is a rest week with a Q&A. Or a podcast. Ooh podcast. I don't know. A lot of people have been asking. When we're, we're working on it. We're working on it. So what do you think of the setup by the way? Just chilling on the couch? I think it's pretty cool. What do you think? I think I like it. All, All right. right.
Well, <laughs> see you Sunday. Bye.